Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Nomen live stream. Uh, happy Friday the 13th. Uh, my name is Adam Hartel, and uh, I'm your host today. And we've got a fantastic stream in store. Um, before we get to that, I just want to mention uh, that we also have 
uh, one of our admissions advisors um, who is in the chat today. If you have any questions about Nomen, uh, you can feel free uh, to bring those up in the chat and we'll do our best to, to get to them and provide you ways to get in touch with us. Additionally, if you have questions for our guests today, uh, you can type those in the chat. Um, we'll try to bring those questions up during the course of the conversation, but we'll definitely set some time aside at the end uh, to be able to get into some of your questions for our guest. And with that, I'd like to introduce um, our guest artist today, who we'll be spending some time with. So Olivier Dubard is a visual development artist currently working at Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, he has worked in live action VFX, AAA games, and animated feature films. Throughout his career, he worked in Sony Picture Image Works, Double Negative, Digital Domain, Microsoft, and Blue Sky. And he's contributed to various projects, including Spider Man into the Spider Verse, Gears of War, Black Panther, Hotel Transylvania, The Terminator, and Star Trek, and is now creating concept art for the cinematic department at Blizzard. Uh, Olivier has released two Nomen workshop tutorials where he explains the workflow for creating film and cinematic environments. Uh, and he also just recently did a fantastic live stream with us um, just last month where uh, he goes into his process of setting up 3D environments, um, one of his amazing personal pieces. So with that, I just want to welcome, first of all, uh, Olivier to the stream. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's great to have you back. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me again. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have some fun today. Um, I think where we the more recent stream we had, we were you know really looking into a particular work of yours and talking about your process. Um, today we want to take some time to you know first of all let's get to know you as an artist. Um, I think we've got a lot of uh, viewers uh, both uh, here in the U.S. as well as internationally who um, you know come onto the stream because they're curious about the, the 3D world. They're curious about what Nomen teaches. And this has been a great way uh, to be able to get these folks face to face with amazing artists such as yourself. Uh, so with that, yeah. um, maybe we could just kick it off um, by having you just share a little bit about your artistic journey, like when you first started making art um, and you know maybe kind of how you found your way uh, to Nomen because you're, you are one of our alumni. Yeah, um, yeah. well, Started making art. I think I started in my mom's checkbook when I was about two years old. Uh, <laughs> awesome. as, soon, as soon as I could uh, grab her uh, lipstick, I just started painting anything I could. I even painted a car one time, and uh, I got grounded for that. But um, I, I was always, you know, drawing since I was a kid. Uh, I was always um, having a, a piece of paper and pens. And with my cousins, we we're always drawing, right? We're drawing our superheroes that we liked. Um, all types of characters. And um, I think for me, I, I stick with it when my cousins decided to do something else. And uh, I think it's when I was in middle school that I really, I knew it, that I wanted to do that for, for a living. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of, I had the, if I can call it the revelation at the time, where I understood that, oh, you could actually get paid to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's when it happened. Absolutely. And, uh, I remember I watched the um, the uh, making of Jurassic Park, and at the time, uh, so while I was watching it, at some point I just and I was I think I was at I was around ten years old or something, and and I realized that people were actually working to do that, right? And it's not like I really knew about it at the time. I was very I would say naive and stuff, so I didn't think that oh you could actually do this as a career. So when I was done watching it, I went to see my parents and I told them, okay, I know what I want to do one day, you know, for, for my job. And, uh, and then here we are today. I did it. I mean, I, I actually worked in the industry. I worked on a lot of things. Um, and my widow, Norman, uh, I, I did a, a lot of things before Norman. So I always did art, but after high school, basically, um, I went to uh, uh, to Paris to study art, and I went. I stayed there for about a year, a year and a half, or two years, because uh, in France it's, it's it's a bit of a different system, right? Um, I had, I did the first year of preparation, mm -hmm. first year of art, so you kind of learn everything: general painting, drawing, um, graphic design. It's kind of just to prepare you for uh, what you want to do after. So I did a year of that. And after that, I went to another city. It was not too far from, from Paris. It's two hours away from Paris. And mm -hmm. I got accepted into an animation and comic book school. 
And then I spent for about four years there. And that's when I learned it's, it was purely traditional. And I did a lot of drawings, a lot of um, anatomy, painting. And I had a specialization, which was comic book. So that's, that's what I did for four years. We were basically, they were preparing us to become um, comic book artists. And at the end of the four years, I mean, I always knew Norman. I always saw uh, the workshop and stuff and the DVDs mm -hmm. that they were making at the time. And so at the end of my four years, I was thinking, so as much as I love comic book and everything, I think, I think it's time to step up and now learn 3D. Uh, as a continuation of my studies. So I got the chance to be accepted at Noman at the time, which was, I don't remember when it was that. I think it was in 2010, that's when I started. Now, let me ask you a question yeah. really quick right there. You, yeah. cause you'd been studying traditional, you know, and uh, comic book, it's, it's all 2D yeah. and you got accepted to Noman. So um, it, not necessarily that you had a portfolio full of 3D work that you submitted to, to Noman to, to get into the school. No, no, no. I, I had no 3D speak experience at all. Um, mm -hmm. I did try Maya when I actually well, I was thinking of joining, of going to Nomen. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to open up Maya and see what I can do. And yeah. it, was, it was terrible. Um, it, it's, it's a difficult software. And no, so I had no 3D experience at all. It was purely 2D. And, and I think even for about two, three years, it was not even drawing on a computer or Photoshop. It was just drawing on film, yeah. right? This, this is yeah. what we had to do at school. Well, what was it like, you know, knowing what you knew about art at that time, which I mean, a lot of most people have had an education in art to whatever degree, you know, they're trained in, you know, traditional 2D skills. When you're looking at 3D and you're looking at Noman, um, I guess I have two questions about that. Number one, why was Noman interesting to you as a 2D artist? And then uh, the second question is, was did that feel like just oh yeah 3d no big deal or was it sort of like hmm i don't know about this uh so for your first question um i think it's, it it came down to the quality of the work mm. right i was looking at the the student works and i was thinking well that that's pretty good i mean that's what <laughs> I, I, was, I was understanding well it doesn't matter if it's 2d or 3d if you're good you're good right if, mm -hmm. you, if you really work hard and if you study, uh, the, if you study hard, then you can actually make good art. Um, and then for the second question, I think I, I don't know if I was really thinking about that. I think for me it was just like it, it was just it was just part of the path. Mm -hmm. It was just part of the, uh, the 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 trail that I was supposed to take. Right? I was I wanted yeah. to start with a strong two D background purpose. Uh, and I was even before starting um, animation school, I was I was looking at 3D uh, schools as well. But I knew that I didn't want to get into 3D right away. I wanted to get a strong uh, 2D foundation first. Yeah. And then when the time was right, I was like, okay, now it's time to do it. But it, but I was just thinking, okay, that's just a normal and uh, normal uh, path to take to go uh, and do 3D now. So there was no really uh, there's no thought or anything. It was just for me, it was just automatic. This is what I have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well then, yeah. Cause I think that's, you know, some, some people find that pathway and then others, you know, they look at 3d and they're kind of like, oh, I don't know. That's, that seems really intimidating. What, so maybe you can help people to understand what was it like for you as a 2d artist, as you got into Nomen, starting to learn that kind of a skill set. Yeah. So uh, like I, like I said earlier, when I, before I joined Nomen, I was like, okay, maybe I should open up Maya and see what it is about. And and, and it was extremely difficult, right? Because, I, I mean, I've never done it. The only uh, digital software that I knew was Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So opening Maya was, for me, was just crazy. There's buttons everywhere. And creating a sphere was already uh, a challenge for me at the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I didn't do any of that during that summer before joining uh, Nomen. And I did a bit of ZBrush. So it was a bit more accessible at the time. Sure. Right? It was a bit easier to use ZBrush. Because I think it was probably more, um, it's closer to uh, sculpting. Yes. But then coming to Nomen for my first term, when you really learn the, the basic of 3D, um, I think it was a really eye opener. And they really, they really taught me how to, um, how to use the software, right? And um, um, okay, what can I say? Can I say that? It was, um, 
it was a completely different world. Then. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm, completely yeah. different. So it was like doing 2D for four years and all of a sudden doing 3D just completely overwhelmed me. Right? It was, it was, mm -hmm. For me, it was, it was a new thing. So I had to relearn everything in a way. Yeah. yeah. At what point did you start to feel like, oh, okay, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I can make something with this that, you know, you're starting to achieve some of that, that personal sense of satisfaction um, of, you know, the kind of work you're able to produce. I think it was during the midterms mm -hmm. because we had, uh, well, we had to learn, you know, the basics, creating primitives and then creating, um, because that's the first thing we do, right? Modeling. So mm -hmm. when you, I started to get a sense of putting two pieces of geo geometry together and we had a first midterm uh, homework. And I think I was able to make a chair and a table and, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, actually I can make that now in 3D. So, you know, that's, so that's, it was an encouragement. Yeah, yeah. That's totally. That's how to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I talked to some artists and they're like, oh, you know, ZBrush, you know, even ZBrush sometimes are like so many different options. Um, I don't know. Uh, and I'll ask them like, well, do you remember the first time you opened Photoshop, <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh yeah. It's like, you, you learned that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, how for you and we're, we're we'll get to this a little bit more in just a bit you know we'll look at some of your work but um i think one of the one of the concerns or, or fears that can be out there uh that i think is easily dispelled once we start looking at people's workflow like yours is this whole 3d thing you know it's it's super technical and it's not artistic and it's not gonna it's not gonna relate to my you know my painting or my drawing and things that i do what would you say to that to that thought uh, I would, it's just, I think it's just a preconception. Mm -hmm. right? um, I think 3D, like drawing or like a camera, it's just a tool, right? Yeah. If, if you know your basics, if you know how to compose an image and how to make a beautiful image, it, it, I, I think it doesn't matter what you're using, right? You mm -hmm. can use your, your, your imagination as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Uh, it's just a tool, really. And 3D is just a tool uh, that I'm using to express the ideas that I have. That's it. It's, it's the same, to me, it's the same thing. If you know how to light, if you know how lighting works and how to make a compelling image with good lighting and, and uh, how to, to convey your message, mm -hmm. and whether you use 3D or pencil or anything else, it, it, it's the same thing, I think. Just I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, I've, I've even said to people, like, I, I think if Leonardo da Vinci were alive today, he would be using Maya and ZBrush. I, I mean, he'd be a big nerd for sure. Yeah, I mean, you look at some of the works that he was doing. He was thinking so much about his designs. I think he would just look at it and go, oh, here, here's a great tool, you know, <laughs> can literally just visualize it. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, you brought up a really good point about taking photos. Um, there's so many illustrators out there that learn a certain degree of photography, right? Because they need to generate their own references or they need to take a picture of a model. Um, in good lighting uh, as reference for their painting. Um, and I think you make a great point that it's just, in a lot of ways, it's like taking that to the next level. Um, you know, now you can, you could, or or it's just like the, the tradition of creating a clay maquette, right? If you got to paint something that doesn't exist, you make a maquette, you, you fabricate yeah. it, you put lighting yeah. on it, you know? So uh, yeah, let's see here. Um, so before, I, I want to, take a look at some of the work you've done. But before we do that, um, can you tell us just a little bit more about your experience at Nomad? What was it like being a student there? Um, you know, because I know that Nomad's really different <laughs> than a lot of other schools out there. So can you tell us a little bit about what your time was like? It was it was amazing, really. Uh, it, I've, it's the first time I felt that being at a school where, well, first we share, we all share the same passion. Mm -hmm. People are extremely passionate. And and the I think the greatest thing that that uh, that was at Noma and I'm pretty sure it's still the same now is that um, you're always at school, right? I was always there, and there was that strong sense of community, and all we always working from I think from ten in the morning to midnight, right? In the labs, I mean, at least that's what we're doing mm -hmm. with with almost everybody at school. I mean, there's a lot of people uh, after ten. There's a lot of people in the labs actually working together. Yeah. Right. And that's what we were doing. So there was like that strong community where people were just uh, helping each other and and sharing knowledge. And that's how we were actually developing our skills, too. When pe we're working in the same labs and we have no problem and we don't know what, uh, how to do with something. And you just have to stand up and ask your, your neighbor, how can I do this? Can you help me out? Or well, people just walk behind you sometimes and they see your work and they start talking to you and then you make friends. And at the end, you have 
300 friends, right? Yeah, yeah totally. It's, that's that's what it was for me. It was the 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 community. I think was made it really strong. Right? It's it, you know I I think just about every alumni I've spoken with from Noma, they they literally give the same answer. It's like it ultimately comes down to that community, the other artists that you get to know, mm -hmm. um, that sense of being in collaboration when you've got a room, you know, full of people who are all in the zone, <laughs> you know, they're all doing it, um, you know, and uh, I don't think that it's very often that people use the word school and yeah. wanting to be there from 10 in the morning until midnight in the same, you know, sentence. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think you could easily substitute the word school for in the zone or at the studio or yeah. doing your art, you know, um, it's just this place that facilitates all the tools, the environment, the inspiration, and the people. And and on Saturday and Sundays, right? It's right. not just three yeah. Quick. yeah. No, and I love that. Um, a lot of people ask, they're like, you know, yeah, but if I'm gonna learn this stuff, you know, it's so expensive to buy the hardware and the software. It's like, no, 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 no. Like the lab's it's there yeah, seven the days there, a week. Yeah. It's it's your playground, go play. And it does yeah. look like a studio. I mean, in normal Absolutely. Sunday, it's, it's very not not as different as where I worked. It's you go to uh, your, your desk or any desk, you log in and then you start doing your work. It's the same, uh, you know, as going to the studio, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, and you were, were you living in the LA area at the time that yeah. you, you came into NOMA? Okay. So did you visit the campus before you started? Oh, no, 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 I was not. So I, I took a trip to uh, to Los Angeles and then mm -hmm. I had the tour as well. So I wanted to check. Gotcha. And then, uh, yeah, of course, I mean, when I, when I first worked into the labs, and I think one of the labs I only think you guys to have is that uh, Star Wars statue. Yeah. Just there, yeah. I mean, yeah. She's still there. Um, she is she is still there. Still there. Yeah. So I remember seeing that and I was like, oh, damn, this is this is freaking cool. I've mm -hmm. never had that at any school that I've been to. Yeah. Yeah, no, since I, I've I, I don't know what year you graduated, but since then we've acquired a lot more <laughs> amazing stuff from a life size first order stormtrooper from JJ Abrams. And you know, the library now, right? Uh, yeah, well it's in the uh, the stormtroopers in the front room in, in the the oh. like the waiting area, kind of like chill couches and TV and stuff that you can, you can sit at. So yeah, I, cause I mean, you know, seeing the Noman uh, workshop uh, tutorials and those kind of things, you don't necessarily get to see the campus, you know? So mm -hmm. there's sort of that big reveal the first time you yeah. get to come on campus. Yeah. So it was, it, it is like a lot like coming to a studio much more than to a college, a traditional college. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, yeah, Nasi, you're you're help you're making me remember how much I miss being on campus right now uh, with social distancing. I yeah, come back. I'd like to come back and visit it again too. It's it's been a while now. Oh, it'd be really 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 fun to have you come back. Um, okay, so yeah, inspiring place to be, community. You're with other artists that are just as passionate as you are. Um, what about you know? How did you feel that you grew as a person? Um, you know, not just in your technical skills as an artist, but how did you actually grow? Uh, during your time at Noman? So the, the funny thing is when I was in France and when um, they're preparing us to become comic book artists, we are more like, I would say individuals, right? We're, uh, you're, you work in your cave and you work at home, like like right now, but but go back 10 years ago as a comic book artist, uh, what, what I was training for. And you just leave at home and you work from home, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't see it. And even being at school, it was not like at Millman where you could just go to uh, school and then just work from there. We were just going to school for the classes. When the classes were done, we were going back to our, our, our rooms or um, uh, my apartment. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was just another 12 hours of drawing and studying. But it was very lonely, right? Sure. So you mm -hmm. become like, a, I, I wouldn't say a hermit, but I was like, I, was, I felt a bit lonely. So coming to Millman for me was like, um, um, opening my social skills a lot, mm, right? Yeah. It's, uh, the fact that like, you're just there with people really, really brought me um, that social uh, life and, and getting to know people and, and being happy to uh, meet new people all the time. Yeah. That's, it's, it's a big thing that um, really marked me at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, artists can tend to be, often can tend to be introverts. Yeah. Um, but you know, the more you start developing art as a career, especially studio work, um, those social skills and those collaborative skills are often, you know, just as important <laughs> as the work that you do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, then I remember absolutely. on the first day, um, they told us at Noman, they said, uh, be nice to everybody 
you know, make friends mm -hmm. and your friends today are going to be, you know, your friends that are going to help you later when you're going to be looking for a job. And, uh, and those friends are still my friends today. And then when a friend needs a recommendation, then, then we're helping each other out. Right. Yep. And something even better. I even met my wife there. So, Oh, really? I never told you. Yeah. I mean, no, no, that's wife. awesome. Uh, my, my wife came from another uh, school. She was at UCLA and she came to uh, Norman to take a class and it was an elective. And I took the same class and that's how we met. So yeah, I oh, went wow. to Norman and I got married. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not an official part of our program, but um, you know, that's, that's amazing. And I hear so often from, from our Norman students as well as our graduates about this feeling of like, uh, I've heard many say, you know, in the place that I come from, you know, in the town that I come from, I was kind of like the black sheep, you know, and then I got to know him and it was just one big school full of black sheep. You know, <laughs> we were all yeah. just the same. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, because, uh, you know, this is something that you're, you're very familiar with and you've been out there working uh, for quite some time already. You know, you, you're well into your career. Uh, but finishing school at Noman, finishing up the program and then making that transition into like now, okay, now I need a job. Um, tell us a little bit what, what your launch was like, uh, going from Noman into the industry. So I got an internship. I remember it's my first step in the industry, um, mm -hmm. three months before finishing school, it was at the meal. Uh, they just opened the, the LA studio at the time. Mm -hmm. So. That's how I started. Um, they accepted me as an intern there, and I interned there for three months. And then after three months, uh, that's when I finished Noman. And then after that, um, the ball just kept rolling. You mm -hmm. know, as you get your foot in the door, the, the ball just kept rolling. And um, Noman was uh, really helped me, and they helped every student to basically uh, put your foot in the door, right? Yeah. Uh, the uh, alumni relationship after when you're done uh, with school and placement was uh, was amazing. I mean, it's just uh, they're really there to help you out. So that was a, it was a big thing, too. Yeah, that's right. Um, and that's I think that's I was just speaking with someone yesterday um, and they were talking about how like, well, you know, the reason why I want to get education is I really want to build a career. I don't just want to have a bunch of skills like I want a career. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> let me talk to you about Noman placement. Um, and it's true, you know, uh, we've been always um, in a 90th percentile, usually the very high 90s. And in 2018, we were 100% um, of our graduates from our programs going into the industry. And that's not, um, that's not just because we happen to have super talented students. It's because you learn the industry at Noman. Um, and then what you said about placement, you know, uh, Shannon Wiggins and the, and the placement department, they work tirelessly to build contacts with studios and, um, you know, show those studios what our students are capable of and direct our students in open doors. You know, we don't go get the job for you guys, but um, we basically give you everything you need and kind of roll out the red carpet right up to the doorstep, you know, um, and uh, that's, it, that's one of the big secrets to our success. Um, so just taking just a little bit of time, kind of at a high altitude, you got there and started working. What were some of the first projects you found you found yourself working on that you're at liberty to discuss with us? Uh, so I mean, the first project I worked on was uh, Call of Duty. Uh, it was Black Ops, I think, Black Ops Two or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, it was it was intimidating, I have to say. They threw me on building a hero asset for my first task. That was like right there on the screen, like pretty close to the screen. I was like, oh my God, I'm, how am I going to do this? This is pretty scary. Mm -hmm. uh, it was scary, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the first thing I did. And, uh, and that's all I wanted to do after that. Just cool projects. Yeah. 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 And so you, you started out um, on Black Ops and then, you know, uh, as you've moved to different studios and different projects, because uh, you've worked both in games and in film. Yeah. Um, so uh, what what has it been like going through those different worlds? Uh, so I, I started in uh, well the meal was originally when I started was a commercial place. Mm -hmm. So that, but it was just for three months. After that I, I moved to London and I worked in film for about another another six months. Mm -hmm. um, and then they sent me to Vancouver. So about a, a year and a half 
I worked for uh, Double Negative, so I worked on. They worked on a lot of the a lot of the feature films that they're making, and it's very fast paced. So I think in in about a year, I build a new portfolio, the new demo reel of having five or six projects. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was really fast paced, um, and I got to, to touch a lot of the skills that I learned at Delman. So. Uh, uh, I came from the uh, generalist uh, track, right? And I, when I went to uh, uh, Double Negative, I got to do a lot of uh, modeling, uh, textures, and also look dev, and, and a lot of lighting as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, and all that is very high end. So I kept doing that, uh, you know, going to the digital domain. Um, where else did I go after that? Sony. Sony, I did mostly my paintings. Uh, I did animation and, and very stylized um, projects, like Spider-Man, for example, which was yeah. uh, very early. So I, I did, and that was mostly painting and my painting. And then mm -hmm. I then I jumped into games. It was it was very different. The pace is very different. Um, the way the um, I'm, I'm not I'm probably not every studio is like that, but uh, when I was at Microsoft, at least the way the approach projects are very different and very structured, uh, very controlled. Uh, the the pace is not as fast as film, for example. Mm -hmm. It's much more slower and much much more control. I mean, they own usually those those game companies they own their own uh, IPs and and franchises, right? Whereas yeah. in VFX you work for for the client, so it's it's more hectic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so games for me was uh, I love the game pace. It's it's uh, it's cooler. I would say. <laughs> and then, um, you know, now you're working in uh, visual development um, and you're developing concept art. And, uh, you know, you have, because we've talked a little bit about this before, you had this trajectory of working more in production and then coming, coming kind of full circle back to uh, creating illustrations and creating, you know, uh, showing concepts, uh, whether that's of environments or, or characters and things like that. Um, how do you feel um, that spending spending time kind of in the whole pipeline, as it were, and learning the entire pipeline at Nomen, how has that prepared you and brought you to a point now where you're you're doing visual development at Blizzard? Um, so I, I before I also did a bit of concept as well, right? Okay, yeah. So I did a bit of production, a bit a mostly production work, and mm -hmm. uh, I did concept as well, um, especially when I was at Method. Um, and a little bit of Microsoft as well on the mm -hmm. Gear franchise, but not that much. But um, doing production work and then also knowing that 2D side and, and drawings and concepting even on my own, yeah. um, those, those two things mixed. And then I think what, what's happening now is I'm bringing um, production knowledge, right, to concept. And and yes. a lot of a lot of people I've seen a lot of people doing that is also my painters that do does the same as well. Mm -hmm. um, the people that come from production then switch to concept, then they understand the production side of it, right? Yep. So I guess what we can what you can do in that case is uh, prepare it, um, the, the 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 concept to make sure that production gets less, right? There's less guesswork. Uh, yes, that's that's I think that's the the strong point of coming from production is to yeah to to, to basically speak the same language. Yes. Yeah. Well, and and for those that may not be as familiar with the pipeline, you know, sort of the difference between production work and and concept work is con the conceptual stage is before production typically. Um, so this it's the designing of everything. What is it going to look like and feel like and be like? And then production is you know so say you have a concept of a character for a game. Um, then when it goes into production, that's when the artists come in and they're going to be making the actual 3D character that the people playing the game will see on the screen. And they're interpreting that character from the designs uh, given to them from the concept artists. Uh, but I think you're, you're bringing a really good point here. And that is, you know, those two worlds don't have to be entirely exclusive of one another. Um, and the more, you know, you know about the pipeline, uh, the better you can work with your team. And I would assume uh, in your experience, it also makes you a more desirable um, employee at a studio. If art directors know that you can speak the same language as everybody else working on the, on the asset after you in the pipeline. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I've, I've worked on some projects where um, I concepting, concepted um, assets, right? 
for example, uh, on Black Panther, I did um, a little bit of armor design and I did uh, environments, right? And what you can, what I could do is I could do quick con scope concept and then pass those assets down, down to production, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the things that you can do. Um, and, and also the, with 3Ds, you, you can see from every angle what your product look like, right? The 2Ds, you only see one side of the, the image. Mm -hmm. But when you have an asset, you can actually rotate and look around and... Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and I mean, do you think that... Um, excuse me. Uh, trying to think of how to phrase the question the best way. Do you think that... Um, would you advise for someone who is interested in concept? You know, uh, and a lot of times I find that people are just because that's the only thing they know about that relates mm -hmm. to drawing and painting. Um, but would you say, no, it's ab it's absolutely beneficial to, to study more than just that part of making movies and games, but also to study, you know, to learn 3D modeling, to learn how to, you know, put a model into a production? Um, I mean, this might be a personal opinion. And, right. and, I, and I know, I know that it is. I'm not looking for the definitive answer that the entire world has to follow now. Um, but yeah, it's more your opinion and your experience. Um, it, from my personal opinion, I, I do believe that um, it's beneficial to know about what is the next department going to do, right? Mm -hmm. What is the unit, the next department's requirement? Um, when, you, when you design a character, it's going to be rigged, right? It's going to be mauled. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some, some of the things might not work. And even in 3D, don't get me wrong, sometimes sculpting something, uh, a character or a creature could not work either when you pass it down. But at least you can, you can prevent that or you can uh, see it at that stage already. And at Nomen, for example, I remember uh, something that they were keep telling us is um, because the curriculum is designed in that way as well where we are learning not just one thing, right? We're, learning, mm -hmm. we're actually learning everything. And I uh, remember they told us, and that's something I kept, and I still do the same thing today, is uh, know what the next department's job is about. Because mm -hmm. if you know what the reader needs, if you know what uh, the lighting needs or texture needs, then you'll be a better asset, right? You'll be able to prepare. Absolutely. People will like working with you um, more because you're going to know what they need, and you're going to be better at communicating those things. That's right. Um, now, before we jump into looking at some of your work, uh, kind of my last question is um, kind of visualizing, you know, a, a little bit from your personal story. I'm thinking of artists out there that, you know, they are fascinated with, you know, some of these movies that inspire them and some of the games that inspire them. And they're going, man, I would love to work in that world. Um, and, you know, what I know how to do right now is I just I just love to draw. You know, yeah. uh, but I, I love that world. How do I get there? You know, what, what do I need to be thinking about right now um, while I'm in high school, you know, or something to that effect? Uh, what would you have to say? What kind of advice would you have to give to artists out there that are in that position? Um, well, I think the first thing first is no matter uh, what movie, no matter what games or style, um, probably the foundation is the most important, right? Uh, learn how to draw, how to observe, it's the first thing is that, that you're going to have to do because even if you want to work for a certain franchise, you're going to have to observe it, right? Mm -hmm. you know, and not interpret it because uh, we might, even there are a lot of things that I like, but it doesn't mean I know how to translate it either, right? Um, but knowing the, your foundation, knowing how to draw, paint, uh, the principles of lighting and, and composition uh, to make you a better artist, those, those things, you know, just get introduced by it, right? Get yep. an introduction. Of all those things, you you get ahead of it. Uh, just and just have fun. Just just be curious about things. I think it's it's just the most important. And and always learn new things. Just just get ahead of the game. And before you get to school, and then you're gonna get hammered hammered with the work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And and again, like that's I, that's a really common advice that I hear um, from working artists is this idea of like you know don't say all I know how to do is draw, like that's where it all starts, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot, I think all of the, the foundational things you even mentioned, like uh, it's good for our audience to know, we actually teach those things at Nomen too, um, because we really do believe, like Olivia is saying, that that is the foundation. That is what you need to start from. 
um, in order, because like you said, 3D is a tool. And you know that tool is going to reflect your knowledge of art, your knowledge oh, yeah. of observation. Um, so I think you know, hopefully, that can help people, you know, rest assured that you know, getting as much as you can from your high school art class, or even if you're in community college, taking life drawing and that kind of stuff, hundred percent relates to the industry, hundred percent. Um, you know, and uh, you know, just like you, Olivia, you know, your portfolio submission to Noman was not full of like epic 3D work. It was full of really strong, I'm assuming, really strong foundational artwork. Um, the drawing. It was mostly yeah. drawing things. Yeah. yeah. And and so, you know, don't don't concern yourself with being an amazing 3D artist if you're looking to apply to a Noman. We'll teach you that part. <laughs> you know, concern yourself with uh, in everything that Olivia just said. Um, so here, I'm going to I'm going to get a I'm going to move a couple windows around here. Now, I'm sorry for the awkwardness of this, but I've got to put my video window on my right hand side over here or the camera's left um, so that I can share my screen and we'll get my screen share up there for us. Um, this is a beautiful piece that you did that we featured in uh, the most recent stream we did with you. Uh, are you just are you simply calling the piece the death dealer or does it have a particular yeah, name? No, it was just it was just an homage to Fred Zeta's death dealer. That's, that's yes. Yeah. yeah. Frank Frazetta, amazing artist. Um, so, you know, for the for the uninitiated, what you're what you're looking at here is, you know, a a two D image, a beautiful illustration um, that was created using using three D skills. Um, and I've asked Olivia if you can kind of talk to us a little bit. You know, not the same thing as the stream you did last time. That was really digging in um, a little more. I, I think a little more in depth, but just you know, from a high altitude, you know, assuming that you're speaking to someone who knows very little about three D. Um, you know, I've, we've got some images here that helps, you know, show the beginnings of the 2D process as it, and then as it starts to come into 3D, but wanted to show this image off the bat just to show you the results. And, and I love this because um, I, it's a beautiful blend, I think, of like 3D rendering and painterly, like graphic uh, painterliness. Um, it, I think if, if Frazetta was going to make a 3D, you know, piece, it would have this, this aesthetic for sure. Um, you know, this is my opinion, but... Uh, I love it. Um, so that's kind of starting with the end result, but then I've got some some great stuff that you sent over of you know the two D sketches, getting ready to figure out this character. So can you talk to us a little bit about how you started out? Yeah. So the one on the left, when you you see all of the uh, iterations, this is mm -hmm. where I can out it actually. Um, I, the franchise exists already, right? It's a character that exists. So. Uh, the, the armor was already there. The design was already figured out. All I had to do was just taking that and having fun with it. Mm -hmm. So I, I just built, I mean, I built, I just first drew a, a, a cannon, so just the body, right? Like you can see him half naked at the bottom. Mm -hmm. but I've, I've started first with, this is my, my cannon I'm going to use as a template to build uh, and, and design all the iterations that I've done. Then what I do is um, I look at I'll, I'll, oh, sorry, I'll, jump back here. Yeah. Actually, actually, for a second, <laughs> um, what I did also was looking at uh, a lot of the interpretation. Of, since it's a famous character, a lot of people already gave their own take on it. So I gathered a lot of that and I kind of mishmashed all of them together. And and I would start with one character, finish you know the, the entire um, um, uh, attire, then mm -hmm. I would move to another one, do whatever is in my mind or whatever I see on my reference board. Then I move on to the other one until, and then I do the same until I'm tired of it or I run out of ideas. And then I, when I'm, I take out when I run out of ideas, then I combine two ideas that I have. So I take idea A, idea B, and I'll be like, okay, let's just put mm -hmm. that plate, this chest on this character, and maybe the uh, the thigh, uh, I'll put it here in the shoulder plates. Maybe I actually change it and, and mismatch between those two designs, right? So I kind of blend and mix them, so yeah. I get another. Uh, uh, page of something that's different from what I've done. Yeah. Um, then when I when when I think when I when I'm happy with it, um, if you look at you know at the bottom of the page. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Jump in the gun here. There's a uh, him half naked and him with an armor. This is the mm -hmm. uh, the actual that I decided to go for, and yeah. then I jumped into TV, right? At that after after that. Okay. And oh, these were some. Oh, this isn't the death dealer. This is just some additional. Yeah. Oh, I was a death dealer, and that's when I wanted to do a lot of sculpture, sculpture in, inside of the um, 
sacrifice room. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of those um, naked bodies and and demons and stuff. And then it was too much, right? So my wife came behind me and she was like, that's too much. (laughs) You shouldn't probably put that in. So, I, but it was just like I just like to show it because it's just drawing. And, well, know. and it's it's so cool. This is straight up drawing. You know, yeah. it's so cool to see. Um, and I, you know, always hear people say the fastest way to iterate usually is in two D. You just just yeah. sketch it out. Yeah, usually, yeah. It's, it depends, but most of the time, yeah. I mean, it, doing a line is is and indicate the shape is faster than sculpting it usually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then this, you know, once you had your character together, this is, you then did a kind of a sort of a test render or kind that's, of an il- final illustration of the character on their own. Yeah, that's that's the, after the sculpt, uh, the final sculpt, and then I also did the material work. So I use a mm-hmm. Um so, so I prepare my UVs and prepare my uh, textures, download whatever I need to download from. I use a lot of mega scan stuff. Sure. Um, and then I do a little bit of look dev, right? Um, it's uh, fairly rudimentary. I would say I would do 85 to 90 percent of the results that I get into ED, and then I render that, and then render a few passes, and then I start painting over um, to yep. either get rid of that nasty because uh, 3D looking image. Sometimes when you render, it's very cold and not really pretty uh, unless you spend a lot of time on it, which we don't. So I try to get rid of that CG looking feeling that we have. So I. I, mm-hmm. I for example, blurring the edges or breaking up the edges. And then yep. I would paint uh, more texture on. And for the body, for example, I didn't have time. Also, I didn't want to do that, just sculpting uh, too much in detail. So I actually used uh, photo textures to show the muscles uh, on top of the model, uh, the render. Mm-hmm. And then like little highlights, texture, texture, um, the scratches, uh, the dirt, and then the fur also on his piece of, on his uh, cloth piece. Um, that's is painting over. So yep. the last ten to fifteen percent is is paint over in post process. Yeah, and, and if you don't mind me, um, I'm even going to take like I'm going to kind of interpret this for someone that may not be familiar with some of the three D process. You know, um, you you in a lot of ways like you sometimes can see artists like if you go on YouTube and stuff like you see artists you know starting with a photo, starting with some sort of a, a photograph and then beginning to paint and work on top of it. Um, you're essentially using 3D to kind of create your own photo, your you own know, photograph. Yeah. yeah. That's an oversimplification, I know, but I was sort of thinking of people like, wait a minute, what's a UV? What's what's that? But, you know, you're, you're sculpting, you take it from 2D drawing to sculpture, then you sculpt out your character, and then you're saying, you know, these are the different materials on the character. This is metal, and this is skin, and, you know, this is how the light's going to bounce off of that stuff. And then you create an amazing uh, 3D image that then you can take it back to 2D again mm-hmm. and start start painting on top of, which um, is a really awesome process. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's a great example of how those two, you know, different tool sets can play together really, really well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's totally. these, these are some more sketches, I think, of uh, what some of the uh, like acolytes or these like priest type characters that were going to be in the environment yeah. with him. Is that right? There were supposed to be statues, you know, uh, watching over the sacrifice room, and and I wanted to give him some kind of a dark feeling and, and yeah, rest, but but it was too much, and also it was too much work. If I had to sculpt a bunch of bodies and and sculpture, sure. like, too much work. So I was like, let's just keep it simple. Yeah, oh, and then this is the design that I think was yeah. a more elaborate one, right? It was more elaborate. It yeah. was, uh, there's a there's a lot of sculpt- mural sculpture, and and then there's like a female and male. So this like different type of anatomies, and I also has curtains at the uh, on the floor and candles. So at mm-hmm. some point, I was like, well, I don't have that much time, and also not that much patience because I had to finish. It was a pretty long project. I was doing you know storyboards. Um, I was also doing so do sketches, the the, the sculpting, and then the rendering and the keyframes. I was like, well, in the in the end, I, I better keep it simple, otherwise I would never finish this. Yeah. Well, one of the things I love about um, artists that have spent some time, you know, really developing themselves to draw for comics is just the, the beautiful line work. I love this sketch work here. Um, okay. It just, it's really clean. Uh, it's somewhat minimalist, but it just reads so well. And, uh, I, you know, again, it's like starting with something that has this much life in it, you know, and then, and then going to 3D. I got to believe that that's super beneficial. Oh, yeah. And here's the environment without the extra 
yeah, extra that's, bits. That's what I'm thinking of too. <laughs> Let's just scrap all that. Okay. It's like be... it's it's like this. There's a whole party happening there. <laughs> And then now it's like, let's focus on the main character. <laughs> you said it right. Um, oh, this is a cool illustration. That's another one of the shots that I was doing. Um, I had, I think, 3D geometry first, and I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So I think I rendered a frame with just mm -hmm. the body of the, the character because I had a model for it. Um, I was, I'm using DAS 3D to post characters. Um, oh, yeah, that's a cool piece of software. Especially for this, it was it was easier to do it that way and faster. Mm -hmm. So only oh, the only thing I had was a, a screen grab of that, and I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So I was like, okay, let's just let's just you know uh, uh, bring it into Photoshop and draw over. You know, mm -hmm. a line is just a line. It doesn't. I don't have to commit to anything. So I started to do it, and then ideas came along, and and then he, I was oh he, maybe he could get strangled by the tentacles because that's how it was in the comic book, mm -hmm. and then. Or maybe I can make the blood drips here. So I started to get gory. It was worse than that. So I had to turn it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want to just, you know, scare people either too much. Right. Uh, but, and then in the end, I was just, after I, I had a good sketch and I, I was happy with it, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to finish it and, and make it look like it was a comic book panel. Yeah. And it totally does look like that. And it's framed really well. Um, the yeah. composition is awesome. And it, uh, the thing you did with Daz, with, with setting up a, a mannequin there, it's like, you know, it's it, uh, for any of you in the audience that, you know, in your art class or maybe just at home, if you like to draw characters and you went, you know, to the store and got one of those little wooden mannequins that you can pose and put in different positions, like uh, Daz is like a digital 3D version of that using it in a simple way. So if I'm understanding, you kind of set up your mannequin in the pose you want, just did a screen grab and then started drawing on top of that. Yeah. I also uh, exported it to in all the poses that I want to do. Because it was too, I'm not gonna just sculpt everything by hand. It was too much. So mm -hmm. uh, I had like a few key frames and stuff. Uh, so what I did was I was posing my characters and then I exported them, and then you know put the armor on and then run and then start working the material and render. Yeah. No, I love it. It's you're it's just you're kind of just using using the tool for whatever you need to do at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah for sure. And then this is one of the final um, illustrations, right? Yeah. Before yeah. he's about to get possessed by the helmet. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, that's yeah. that's the other the cool thing that I remember from the stream is like working in 3D, you don't have to keep repainting the same scene over and over again. You can change the angle in 3D space, which let you not just do one painting, but tell an entire story. Yeah, I, I basically what happened is um, I built a set, right? It's a set, mm -hmm. and then uh, this sequence is going to happen here. And then I started to scout with cameras. I, I, use, I started to learn Unreal also at the time. And uh, so I put a camera in there and I just play around and, and take some screen grabs and be like, and it's, it's basically scouting, right? So I was scouting my camera angles. And then from there, I decided, okay, I'm going to put the character here and they're going to do that. This is what's going to happen because I already had a little, uh, some kind of an idea at the beginning mm -hmm. of what I wanted to happen. So as a scout, I was thinking this shot could work with this uh, description that I want to do. And then, yeah. yeah. So you can just recycle a lot of things. You, you, well, you, you, and I remember from from the previous stream and you know doing just a little bit of this kind of stuff myself. It's so much fun because you literally, you know, it's it's not a bunch of like technical three D stuff. No, really. It, it turns into like you whatever you're imagining, you can make it real. You can make yeah. your own set, and then you can move around that set and like, yeah. well, what if we? What if I'm the audience members here <laughs> looking from over here? And it's just so much fun. Yeah, it's just fun, yeah. Yeah. You, you're playing. I was playing with this. I, I was just having fun. I was just like, yeah. let's, let's put it here. Let's just put a camera here. Let's just throw flames here. Let's just put some totally. little, little rescues. Yeah, totally. Well, yeah, and there's times that, you know, I'll be I've, I'll be drawing an illustration, right? Or, you know, kind of drawing uh, even like kind of a storyboard, just a quick thing. And then it's like, oh, it probably look a lot better if like I was looking up more, you know, or if the perspective changed, right? Yeah. And you know, uh, you know, before three D, it was like, well, I guess I have to draw an entirely new drawing again now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas totally. now, like you said, you get it all set up. You could just move around. What if? What if? What if what I'm if? over here? Yeah. yeah. And I think what you get is a lot more creative output because you're not uh, intimidated by having to repaint or redraw something. Yeah. yeah. So now this is a really cool wide shot looking down. Yeah. On this scene you set up. Yeah. And this is kind of him. He's he's in chains, right up here on this. Uh, yeah, he's in chains, and then they're coming. Him and his two assistant, two or uh -huh. three, 
uh, they're coming and they're supposed to help him. But I think as soon as he wears the mat, the helmet, he, you know, he's a death dealer. So he's just slashing them all. Um, right. Yeah. It's almost like the, it's, it's like Frankenstein's monster in a sense, right? Yeah. Like they make him and then he kills them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I love this this kind of stuff, and I think it's like a re it's you're taking something that that was a painting and then was a comic and then bringing it to life. But you know, for those of you out there who are into more stylized stuff, or maybe you you're super into something that looks very different than this, like the the tools are the same. You can yeah. literally do the same stuff. You can take you know your drawing or the thing that you're imagining, whatever the style is, and bring it into something three-dimensionally and then play with it and, and paint and, and everything you're seeing Olivia do here. Uh, here's another really cool perspective shot. That was the first image, I think. Yeah. And the stylized thing, like you said, um, I don't know if we have the truck up here, but the truck oh, yeah, stylized I can, too. Yeah. I can jump over to that. Well, actually, I think we're just on our last. Yeah, so this was the this was a a render from that drawing that you did. Exactly. I went awesome. back to the and sculpted the tentacles and yeah. And, body and stuff yeah. okay so now yeah now we're getting into the truck yeah so yeah i mean the truck was i used the same tools except i use blender but you know 3d is 3d mm -hmm. um, and when when so i start with this right just a bunch of uh, and drawing and there's not even any perspective here it's just a uh, uh, drawing that imitates a very wide lens so it's flattening mm -hmm. everything i don't have to deal with the perspective mm -hmm. uh, but then after that then i would build something in 3d uh really quick and then i would just draw over again yeah to, uh, to basically i have the main shapes but i don't have the little uh, surfacing details that i that i would like to to change like uh there's uh, secondary shapes right mm -hmm. uh, logo or the little vents uh yeah. the bumper like i didn't have those things so that's when i get into 2d again and drilling over my 3d and, and then changing those things putting the windows and then uh the stuff on the the, the cargo area yeah no, and they, even Blender uh, has a, has a uh, it's kind of like a filter in the rendering process. Like if you do have some of the secondary forms already, it'll, it'll even render the line work for you. Yeah. yeah. Like it'll it'll give you something that looks like a hand drawn sketch. You can have um, that too. Yeah. yeah, but I I love this process. Um, mm -hmm. Like getting just the forms that you need, so that you don't have to be as preoccupied with the more technical things of the drawing, and you just get to design. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you got a plan. Oh. You just design it. Yeah, and that's the final rendered. Super cool. Yeah, this is this is a totally different style. This is a lot more stylized. Um, it feels like stylized realism. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, super cool. Yeah, so you, you you can you can do whatever you want, really. You know, uh, it's like we said, it's just a tool. Whatever you want, yeah. you put your mind, you can make it. Yeah. yeah. I think. Let's see. We have a. Oh yeah, we have, we have another image of the. Was, of the that was the well. first render I did. I think. To test. Okay. And yeah. you did all this in Blender? Yeah. Okay. That's a Blender render, actually. I, this, actually, I didn't paint at all. There's no paint over this. Oh, yeah. No, and it, Blender does a good job. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for anybody who doesn't know Blender is, if you're curious about 3D, uh, Blender's a great way uh, to look into it because not only is the entire software package free, um, but there are a ton of really helpful tutorials for Blender. Um, on YouTube. So you don't kind of have to just sort of be on your own trying to figure it out. That's a great way to get started. And then this is another scene. Uh, was this also Blender or? No, this was Octane. But this this is heavily painted over. Gotcha. There's a... it, it reminds me, I mean, I don't think it's, it doesn't look like it's production art from that, but it reminds me a little bit of, you know, some of the beautiful um, environments for Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think I think after Spider Verse, I was still inspired by the movie. Yeah. So I kept I kept doing you know those uh, that that style I think. Yeah, and the and the team just nailed that beautiful like blend between realism and super graphical read. They did a great job, really. Yeah. They were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Got another one here. Yeah, it's yeah. Blender as well. Yeah, yeah it's uh, well, once you know the tool is liberating, you can create art. Yeah. That's, I think that's the best point of all, right? You know, yeah. it, it, learn a tool and it's liberating. I had a friend ask me once, uh, I was showing him a drawing, it was a long time ago, and he's sort of a, a mentor to me. And uh, it was, I did like a drawing of a TIE fighter or something like that. And I'd used, 
For some of it, I'd used, you know, hard, hard edges and ellipses to get the curves and stuff. Mm -hmm. In other areas, like in my hubris, I tried to just do it, do it by myself. Um, and he's looking at it and he's like, oh yeah, um, looks like you used uh, an ellipse and some drawing guides here. And I sort of like apologize, like, yeah, you're right. Like that wasn't a good thing to do. <laughs> it was best just to draw yourself. And he was like, no, no, like that's what you're supposed to do. Like find a tool that gets the job done. Yeah. He's like, did you, did you make the pencil <laughs> that you were using? You know? yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. It's, it's a great point in the sense you just learn the tools and you're even freer than you were before. Doesn't matter. You just, you just, you just here to create. It doesn't matter what you use and how you use it. Just mm -hmm. do cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this one here could easily be a 2D painting, just straight up in Photoshop. But this is a, this is a 3D render, right? 3D render. Uh, it's mostly 3D. Of course, the smoke or the trail is sure. Trendy. And yeah. there's a bit of touch-ups on the ship, but the rest is 3D. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just it's beautiful what what can be achieved. Yeah. Um, so I think that, that's all the slides we've got. So we'll um, just take down the screen share and uh, hold that off for a little bit later. Um, while we're waiting to get that screen share down, um, before we jump into uh, before we jump into questions from the audience, um, kind of one of the last things I like to to ask our guests is, you know, what advice would you give yourself if you could go back? You know, and, you know, let's let's say kind of that from junior high when you had that realization of I really want to do this for a living and then you start pursuing it. Let's say you're in high school by that point. If you go back in time, if you could kind of Marty McFly the thing and go back and talk to yourself, what advice would you give yourself um, as an aspiring artist? Um, <laughs> apply the principles. Hmm. Don't, don't burn bridges. Right. Uh, because when I say don't burn bridges, I mean, don't go, don't run before you can walk, right? This is the thing that I, I think uh, I wanted to go too fast all the time. I just want to just want to do it to make sure I get to the next steps and then get to the next steps. But but if you don't master the principles or the, the, the step before that, it's it's not good. It's not going to be a good transition. So for me, I think I would, t I would say be patient. It's a lifetime uh, goal. Mm. You can't just get it in a year or six months. It's going to be until you die. So take your time and really absorb the knowledge, really digest it. That's, I think that's what I missed. And, and even today, sometimes I, I catch myself, just want to do it fast because I want to keep you know, improving. But you mm -hmm. can't improve faster than what you can. Right? So take your time. Yeah. Digest what you can digest now. It's, it's better because at least those points will be strong. And then you can build on it. That's what I would tell myself. Right? That's great advice. It's uh, helpful for me to, to be reminded of that as well. Um, and then are there any, uh, I mean, we already talked about Blender being a free resource, but are there any other resources out there that you might point um, some younger aspiring artists towards, uh, whether they want to build up their their foundational skills or they want to start playing around in 3D? Well, there's a lot of, um, uh, like Kid Bash is good, you know? Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Bash 3D is amazing. I mean, the it's, it's pretty the price is not bad at all if you want to just have own a bunch of assets and you can do whatever you want with it uh, right there's that and then there's also other websites where you can download model for free you know turbo squeeze or cg traders those you can find mm -hmm. a lot of free models there so you can you can just download stuff and kid bash things together that's that's, uh, that's great um th that's a really good reminder like i like i've been working with some scenes in 3d and you know you have to, I think part of absorbing what you need to absorb is like slowing down and realizing what is it that I want that I'm focusing on for this piece, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Is it to literally model the Millennium Falcon by hand, or do I just am I working on on setting up a scene? You know, mm -hmm. uh, so if you can download it for free, go grab a model and put it in there so you can start playing around. If you yeah. you know don't know how to model and you you know cover literally just the first tutorial in something like Blender that shows you how to use the workspace, you can bring in models and mountains and all kinds of stuff and set up a whole scene and then, and then rotate it and move it. Yeah. And without having to know how to model, start to get a feel for the possibilities exactly. um, that you can do. That's great advice. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we've got some questions that have come in on the chat and then guys, I, we're moving into that time now. So I would definitely encourage you 
got anything you want to ask Olivier, just type it right in the chat. My colleague Xander is going to get that to me. Um, so let's see, starting off with tools consistently changing, how often do you adjust your workflow? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Uh, not as often as I should, I think, but, um, the thing is with workflow uh, is, is that there's the workflow that you learn at home by yourself. And then there's the workflow that you use at work, right? The workflow that I use at work, I don't change it that often because I need to produce work that works and it needs to be produced fast or at least fast enough. And it needs to be successful in a way. Mm -hmm. Successful means you need to deliver, right? So yeah. that's at work for professional uh, work. I don't change it that often. For my personal work, I try to change it as much as I can. So um, I will spend six months on, on a piece of software and trying a workflow. And then after that, I'll be like, okay, when I, when I, I feel like I'm good with it, I get to move on to something else. So I would probably, for example, move on to Blender and, and try EV for mm -hmm. another six months and then just do that uh, on, my, on my own time. So really, I think it, when do I change it? It depends when the software or the, it, uh, the, the workflow comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on how tired I am of using the software right now, right? <laughs> but sometimes sure. at some point you, you get stuck, right? You yeah. feel like you're doing the same thing all the time. So then when I feel like I'm getting, I'm just doing the same thing and I'm not moving forward uh, or I'm not improving as much as I, as I think, then I'm looking at other things, other workflows, mm -hmm. other softwares, then that's kind of how, when I change it. Yeah. And time spent learning is always worthwhile. You know, oh, yeah. I, I remember I, I'll go on a deep dive on some approach that takes days or weeks uh, to realize that that's cool, but maybe not what I want to be doing right now. But everything I learned along the way, I get to bring back. Into everything. Yeah, doing. everything. Yeah, helps definitely. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Uh, we've got another question. Uh, what's the most enjoyable part of the whole design process for you? Um, you know, what's the part you like most and why do you like it? Um, I think from there, it's a difficult question to answer. It is <laughs> because they are all the steps. I enjoy every steps. It's, it's really hard for me to answer that because I love just doing the sketches when I just do whatever I want. And I don't, the blue sky phase, right? When I don't care about anything, I just, just mm -hmm. draw whatever idea comes to my mind. I do it. It's fun. But then, you know, at some point when I do that too much, I'm like, I get bored, right? Or I get tired of it for the time being. Then I move to another step, which is bringing into 3D and start sculpting rough shapes. I love that steps too. So I, I can't tell you, I think I love every steps and I'm not even kidding. I actually love every step, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. And then at the end you, you render and then you put your final touches and you're like, I'm done. And yeah. then you, you do the same thing again. So it's, I can't answer that question, it's too hard. No, I, I, I totally feel that. Um, I had, a, I was kind of talking about the same thing with, uh, the artist who uh, just won an award for designing Baby Yoda, Christian Alsman. Um, and uh, he was like, well, it's, you know, it's like, well, when I'm drawing, I get to put, have my drawing hat on and love doing that. And then when I'm sculpting, I get to be a sculptor and <laughs> do that too. So it's like, you get to wear a lot of different hats and, yeah, yeah. and uh, be enthusiastic about all of them. Yeah. Um, let's see here. And then another question is, uh, Okay, what is the current state of AI-based tools in the industry? Uh, for example, upscaling, temporal interpolation, denoising, are they solid and reliable part of your workflow? So some of that I understood. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's uh, something you're working in a lot, but yeah, a lot of the AI algorithms that we now have, uh, I, what do you see in there? I, AI, I don't, I don't know anything about it. I don't use it at work, uh, or maybe I don't know and they're using me, I have no idea. <laughs> but it could happen. Yeah. Um, but AI, I don't know really. Uh, I, we don't. I don't work with that. Um, but I think that person mentioned the denoser and such. Um, yes, it, I do use it, but it's not really always important. I don't want to have, especially for concept art. I don't want uh, crisp images. You know, mm -hmm. if there's dirt in the image and noise, it's actually better. It yeah. Make, make the image more uh, alive and less CG looking. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just bumping up against the same issue myself. We were talking about uh, rendering in Octane before the stream. Yeah. And it's like, do I want the noise or do I not want the noise? I, uh, I usually want the noise. I yeah, yeah. 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 Make, yeah make no, it more like grungy, it's, it's more interesting to look at. 
Yeah, and then there's there's some really interesting AI based things out there, like um, what is it, Art Breeder yeah. website, where it'll like a, do like a bunch of iterations of mashups of different character designs. It's it's cool, but I wouldn't necessarily rely on it for my designs. Yeah, um, you, I think you still need to think. I yeah. think you, know, you still have to have a process and think. Yeah, and yeah. Know. What I, what I love about some of that stuff is sometimes it'll spark an idea or help me see something way I hadn't seen before. And then I can run with that idea on my own. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe we're all just a big computer simulation and we don't know it. We're just in the matrix, right? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, let's see here. Is there a difference in your process between working on films versus games? I know you, you touched on this a little bit, but um, uh, about the pace of games and films, but your personal process when you're approaching uh, your designs and things that you're doing, uh, are there differences on whether you're doing that for a game or a film? Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, I mean, in my experience, at least. For games, there's the, the poly count, right? Uh, so you have to think about those things. For film, not really. It's You just load as much as you can, make it look as detailed as possible. I think that's, that's the main difference that really uh, marked me over the years is film, it doesn't matter. We're in a chip. We have a lot of processor processing power. Just put whatever you want in there. And then, mm -hmm. like, well, we don't have that much, so you, we have to be economical. Yeah, uh, that's what I. That's what I. I, I got out of those two uh, industries. Yeah, for sure. And there's there's positives and challenges to both approaches. Oh yeah, uh, totally. to be sure. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I'll give you guys just a few more minutes to throw some more questions into the chat. Um, talk with Olivier about a couple things. We're waiting on that. Um, so I I want to talk like specifically about like because it sounds it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you you spent uh, some of your time before uh, pursuing Gnome and like really focusing on I want to do comic art. I want to make comics, draw comic characters, that kind of stuff. Um, that's a very that's. A, even um, beyond just drawing, that's a that's a very specific type of drawing. Um, and I don't want to steal any of your thunder, but w I look to comic book artists a lot t for character design, but also in economy of design, right? Like a lot of times in a comic, you don't have every color under the rainbow or you're just working in black and white. Um, so how do you feel that your background in studying that, how does that come into your art today? and maybe make you unique or give you, you know, special superpower, you know, whatever it is. Well, the, the thing is with 2D is you have, compared to 3D, you have to think, right? Uh, 3D, sometimes I say, I say it's easier to just throw a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. them and, you know, play with it, but in, and without thinking. Sorry, excuse me. That's, that you can do with 3D. With 2D, I find myself that I have to think first. What do I want to put on the paper? Especially when I was at school and we were teaching us to draw on paper, right? You're not going to just put something on the paper without thinking first because it's going to be there and it's not going to, you're not going to be able to erase it. Or if you erase it, you're going to see marks. Uh, so uh, here's an example that is going to show you how I use that to the knowledge for 3D. Um, when you compose an image and I have a character, for example, we have to focus on a silhouette, right? So uh, especially comic books, when we ink and we, we decide where we want to put our blacks and our shadows. If you need to have a strong silhouette, if you want your image to read, right? Um, then moving into 3D, those principles still apply. So when I wanted to, for example, the last image of the Death Dealer, I try to, care, to keep a strong um, a silhouette when he's throwing his axe like that to make sure we can read the body. Even if it's just a black and white uh, clip art, we can still mm -hmm him with the axe and then the, the other character on the floor saying, please don't kill me, right? <laughs> right. It's just yeah. a black and white clip art. You can still read that. So that's what um, 2D really taught me. Think before putting something on the paper. Just don't, just don't go and start doodling. Just think about it first. Know your yeah. yeah, that's that's kind of where uh, what what it gave me and where what I do with it today. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's a perfect example of why, you know, understanding uh, your foundation in art, understanding the, the basic art principles makes you a better 3D artist. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, well, I want to be respectful of your time and we're already, we're already over an hour. 
Um, so, uh, Olivier, I want to thank you so much for just, you know, taking some time in the middle of the day to jump on the stream with us and chat. Um, I, I love these times uh, because they're very relaxed and it's just really a chance to talk and, and listen to how you think and what you've done. So um, I've gained a lot. I know that our audience has gained a lot just from spending some time with you today. So thank you. Thank you so much. It's really a real pleasure to be here with you guys. Um, and, and, I, and I was looking at the, uh, the reel, you know, mm -hmm. before we started and I was just thinking the work just keep getting better you know it it does <laughs> i love every time the the new student reel comes out um at noman it's always a really exciting time because it's like what is it going to be now I know. You know? <laughs> it's crazy keep keep doing good work guys it's amazing and and yeah good luck awesome thank well thank you very much olivier um yeah and uh stay safe Same and way. i think you're you're up in the pacific northwest is that right in New York right now. Yeah. Oh, you're in New York right now. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but yeah, be safe where you are. And um, if you guys uh, want to see more of Olivier's art, follow him on social media. You, you, you've got a, an Instagram feed as, as well as if you guys are on ArtStation, you can go find him on ArtStation. Just search his name. Look at his name from, from the uh, title of this event. Uh, search him on any of those platforms uh, and follow him. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to transition into sharing a bit about Noman and everything. And uh, we will see you uh, hopefully soon, sir. All right. Well, guys, um, give me just a moment to set up my screen. But um, on the heels of getting to talk with Olivier about his experience at Noman and about um, you know the way that he learned there and the kind of career he has today and what he's doing, I wanted to take uh, just a little bit of time at the end of this stream to provide you with information about Noman as a college that you can learn these skills at and you can prepare for a career. Um, so just starting off, um, it's important to know that Noman's been around for quite a while. We started off in 1997. We were actually started by an industry artist uh, by the name of Alex Alvarez. And he started Noman as a place where artists from, from the industry, from studios could come and begin learning things like Maya and learning 3D uh, for production. Uh, since then, we have blown up into a, a very, very rapidly uh, into a college with a full-time program and a degree offering. As you can see here, we've won a lot of awards over the years, uh, ranging from things like ranking number one worldwide amongst all the top schools competing in our field uh, to you know winning school of the year in VFX, games, and animation, which is pretty much our entire curriculum. Uh, so just to give you an idea that we've been around for over 20 years, we're very good at what we do. And as a result, um, we've got some really amazing alumni. Uh, so every one of the projects that you're seeing on the screen right now is a project that a Noman graduate went on to work on. Um, and uh, these are some of the studios out there who are regularly hiring uh, Noman grads as well. So you're, I'm sure you're familiar with a good portion of these. Um, as I mentioned, we have an incredibly high placement rate. We're very proud of that. And it's intrinsic to our mission as a school. 97% uh, uh, industry placement in 2019. Um, and as I mentioned, the year before in 2018, 100% placement. Um, and we've always maintained a very, very high placement rate. The way that we define that is placement means that uh, that is the percentage of the graduates from our full-time programs who find a job in the industry doing what they trained to do uh, within six months or less after finishing our programs. And most of them are actually finding their, their jobs much, much more quickly uh, than in six months. So it's important to convey that because um, as a school, we are not just interested in teaching you skills um, or giving, giving you a degree. All of that is really important, but it serves the end goal of making you industry ready with an emphasis on you are pursuing a career um, in this world. And we're very proud um, of the placement rate and the way that we've been launching artists into their careers over the years, guys. Um, so next up, um, just wanna share a quick video clip with you. And I hope that the audio is coming through. When someone recommended me checking out- But Nomen. it doesn't sound uh, like it I is. I not actually anything about So that's not entirely necessary, guys. We don't have to take a look at that. Um, but you've heard us mention the, the terms on the, uh, on the conversation earlier with Olivier, but what Noman is teaching uh, these industry artists is in one term is called digital production. 
Uh, and that's sort of a catch-all term for the following skill sets and disciplines. These are going to be things like learning computer-based visual effects, character and creature design, digital sculpting, character and creature animation, environment design, lighting and rendering, matte painting and compositing, game asset creation, game engines, production workflows, and world building. Now, you might be familiar with some of those skill sets, and some of these terms might be new to you, but every one of them translates into the following careers. So every, every title that you see on the screen here uh, is a, a unique step in the pipeline for digital production, whether we're, whether we're talking about films and television or we're talking about games. Um, and each one of these steps is a career path unto itself. And um, these are varied type of positions for varied types of artists um, with different passions and different ways of expressing their art. So I wanted to touch on just a few of these briefly so you can get an idea of the diversity of the types of positions and careers that you can be building with a digital production skill set. So the first up is going to be character artists. And let's get this slide to move on here. There we go. So a character artist is going to be doing exactly what the name sounds like. They are responsible for creating the 3D character or creature that you're going to be seeing in the film um, or in the game that you're playing. This is what the audience sees on the screen. Uh, so this artist here is using a piece of software called ZBrush. And ZBrush essentially lets you use traditional sculpting techniques, so clay sculpting techniques, with virtual 3D clay on your screen. So it's ideal for making things that are organic in nature, whether that's a character, a creature, um, even other organic shapes found in nature. Um, and this is a great position for, you know, um, as we, like we looked at in Olivier's workflow today, um, you know, here's a person who is both drawing characters and ideas for characters um, on paper, um, but then also translating those into 3D using software like this. So this is a great position for someone that's that's very, you know, visual art and even traditionally art leaning in their skill sets and what they like to do. Next up are um, effects artists. And um, effects artists, in a nutshell, um, I like to say, are basically spending the whole day on their computer blowing things up. Uh, and they're creating very complex yet visually stunning animation sequences like what you're seeing right here, which happens to be Noman student work. Um, and uh, because these kind of scenes are so complex, you couldn't animate these traditionally by hand like you would for a character or a creature. In other words, go in and move each particle on the screen by hand. Instead, effects artists are using special software that simulate uh, real world physical properties. So they are using software that drives simulations for things like an explosion in zero G um, or an, a building exploding or you name it, whether it's a massive uh, you know, ship coming out of the water or a shrink ray or whatever it is. These are the artists that are visualizing that um, sometimes in a hyper real or a fantastical way, but in order for the audience to believe it, they have to ground it in reality. And so the way that they're doing that is they're making these animations driving physics simulations. So this is a great example of you know, a pathway for an artist um, who wants to tell stories visually, who is very much a, a, you know, a visual artist, but they um, are also very curious. You're kind of that person that's always looking at the world around you going, why does that work that way? <laughs> How can I figure that out? Um, you know, and uh, even for people that have some, some skill sets in coding and whatnot, those are all things uh, that are very valuable skill sets in creating amazing art like this. So next I wanna talk about um, compositors. Um, compositors are almost at the end of the digital production pipeline, and that is because they're the artist that receives all the different pieces for a scene like this and puts them all together. So they don't make the animation or the video or the models and those things, they put it all together. So as you see here, uh, the tennis court and background are 3D models. The tennis players are actors filmed in front of green screens. The buildings and props in the foreground are 3D models with uh, texturing and lighting put on them. Additional actors are inserted and then a final lighting pass is done over everything. And you wind up with a sequence like this. Um, and uh, this for all intents and purposes, you know, looks like an entirely real location. Um, and the audience doesn't really know that that's not real. And that's because the compositor is doing an incredible job of receiving all of those different parts from other artists in the pipeline, but they're the sort of the wizard that weaves it all together to make a totally believable shot like this. Now, going all the way more to the very beginning of the digital production pipeline, let's talk about pre-visualization. 
Uh, these are artists that um, I would say in a lot of ways at their heart are storytellers. Um, and they're using simplified 3D models and animation to um, convey and tell the story of an entire sequence in a film. Um, there are a lot of films out there, for example, like Avengers uh, uh, Endgame, done almost entirely like this before the film ever went on uh, to be shot. And that's because movies these days are getting so complex. Um, there's such a blend on the screen of things that are going to be filmed in the real world in camera and things that are going to be put in later that are digital effects and, and 3D models. So what we need to do is create moving storyboards. So a pre artist works very closely with the director and the cinematographer, and they basically create a thumbnail of the entire film like this. Um, so these are artists that are probably more interested in telling a story in a big picture than spending, you know, three months on making sure that you know, Brad Pitt's face is pixel perfect for this scene. That's what the other artists are gonna be doing. So if that's you, um, this could be a really great uh, role for you in working in production. All right, so with uh, just some of these jobs and careers in mind um, and how varied they are, let's talk about how Noman is training artists for those careers. Uh, these are our academic offerings. So here's a bird's eye perspective for you. You can see in the upper left-hand corner, um, our main academic offering, which is our full-time four-year degree, that is a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Production. Uh, to the right of it, we have our certificate program, uh, which is a little bit more intensive, a little bit more advanced than our bachelor's. Uh, it's the same education, but it's just two years, uh, a little bit more like higher education, uh, you know, post-grad uh, type studies. Um, both of those programs on the top, those full-time programs, do require a portfolio submission. And I'll tell you in a little bit about how we can help you out with your portfolio before you apply to Noman. Um, but looking at the bottom row here, on the left-hand side, we have our foundation in art and design. Um, and as Olivia was saying earlier on the stream, uh, you know, working on those foundational skills in art are so essential, um, and we teach them at Noman as well. So this is intended to help you build your portfolio at Noman before you apply to the full-time program or to a program, a different program at another art school. Um, as well as uh, lastly, we offer well over 70 of our classes as individual courses. Um, and these bottom two uh, that I'm mentioning do not require a portfolio submission. It just, you have a conversation with admissions and either you know sign up for an individual class or enroll in our foundation in art design. So let's take just a closer look at these. Uh, the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree at Noman is a full-time four-year program that is fully accredited. That means that financial aid is available and we can point you towards the types of grants and aid that you could apply for uh, as a student that is going to be studying at Noman. Um, it is um, full-time on our campus. However, under social distancing, I'd like to say that we have been able to uh, transition our full-time program to being entirely online for the duration of our campus closure. Um, this is not a last minute stitched together online program. This is something that was well thought through. It is a custom built platform that was built uh, several years ago for online classes that we wanted to be providing. So the result now is we are, um, people are able to start into our BFA program uh, under social distancing um, and then start coming to campus once they're able to open up again but you're still able to get a really great classroom experience with our instructors, uh, group critiques, uh, demos, as well as a lot of interaction with your peers, both in and outside of the class, and student mentoring outside of class are all part of our online program. So you can check that out um, by going to uh, nomen.edu, right there on the front page, if you scroll down, we've got a great little video that we made about what you can expect learning online at Nomen. So with that said, the BFA at Noman has an optional concentration in game art. Uh, and that means uh, that as you're going through the four-year program, you can come to a point that you can choose to say, well, I, I know that I want to work in games specifically, so then it will take a lot of the disciplines that you're learning and teach you how to do those steps in the pipeline specifically within game engines. Like Olivier mentioned, the workflow for a video game as opposed to a feature film are different 
there are different kinds of constraints you're working with in games. Um, whereas, you know, film, you can uh, you can do you put a lot more on the screen <laughs> digitally. So we want to make sure that you know how to work with game engines and you understand that workflow so that when you go out and start applying to studios after graduation, you understand what you were doing specifically for their workflow. Um, now, you'll learn all the aspects of what we call a 3D generalist skill set. Uh, and what that gives you, um, as Olivier said, you literally learn every step in the pipeline. Um, and that makes you an incredible, incredibly valuable member of the team. And it also uh, makes you a, it's the reason why Noman students are kind of, you know, monsters <laughs> as junior artists coming into studios is they don't know how to do just their one thing, but they can jump into any area if needed. Um, and they can also speak the same language as all of the other people uh, in the pipeline in the studio. Now, um, in the last four terms, of the BFA, you also do get to pick out four electives that allow you to focus on a particular area or skill set that you're very passionate about, whether that's building up extra skills as an animator um, or as uh, you know, an environment artist or character artist or in VFX, uh, you name it, uh, you can pick out those classes. Um, the uh, BFA has a rolling admission. So if you want to apply to the BFA, you don't have to just do that only in the fall, but you can apply in the fall, the winter, the spring, um, or the summer. Um, uh, application uh, is still open for the uh, winter term coming up at Noman. Um, so my colleague Xander will be letting you guys know in the chat how you can get in touch with um, Noman if you're interested in applying or even just have questions about our programs before you apply. Um, that's available to you. So that's a BFA at Noman. Uh, that is full training in the entire digital production pipeline together with a four-year college degree uh, coming out of the program. Uh, next up is our two-year certificate program. And as I mentioned, this is also fully accredited, but it's a little bit more advanced. It's a little bit more like a higher, higher education, post-grad. And that's because it's basically two years of hyper-intense Navy SEALs training <laughs> in digital production. So it's learning the same stuff from the BFA, uh, but in just two years um, with a little bit more added in um, at a more intensive pace. So this is ideal for someone who maybe already has a degree uh, somebody who has a degree from another art school that wants to come to Noman as a finishing school to use their uh, art skills from their degree uh, specifically towards digital production. Um, it's intended to build foundational 3D skills and let you pick um, from one of five areas to focus on uh, for the remainder of your time in the program. Next up are, is the foundation in art and design. This is intended to allow you to build your portfolio at Noman before you apply to the full-time program at Noman. Um, and this is because uh, we want to make sure that we're giving you every opportunity. Uh, we don't want to just you know, turn away people because maybe their portfolio isn't at the level it needs to be at, or there's still skill sets they need to learn and go develop. Instead, we wanted to be able to offer all of that uh, through a course at Noman. This is uh, a one-year course. You don't have to stay in it for the entire year. It's four terms, and it's just there for you to get in and get what you need. This is a preparatory education. Uh, you're going to build a well-rounded portfolio, um, and you're going to lay down all of the groundwork, all of the foundational stuff that we were talking with Olivier about um, before moving on to further education, uh, whether that is you're intending on applying to the full-time degree at Noman, um, or you are going to go to another art school to learn a different kind of a skill set. The foundation is a great way for you to uh, build your portfolio under the instruction of industry professionals. Uh, again, there's no portfolio submission required. This is just simply something you have a conversation with admissions about, and they help you enroll into the foundation. There's a great option for anyone coming straight out of high school that might need to build up a portfolio still is a great way to do it. Half the classes uh, you take in the foundation also transfer into the BFA, so you kind of get a head start. And if you uh, get a GPA of about 3.2 or higher in the foundation, you also automatically get a $500 scholarship towards the BFA program. So this is a great option. Uh, you can talk with our advisors about if it's a good option for you. And uh, lastly, really important to say that well over 70 year classes are offered individually. Um, this is an opportunity for anyone who is a high school graduate, has a high school transcript, uh, to take um, you know, single classes at Noman a la carte. Whether you're an industry professional um, and you want to do some career development by taking a class at Noman uh, through our ETP program, which helps to actually pay uh, for classes if you're, if you're working in the industry in a studio, 
Um, or if you're a community college student and you want to take an evening class or a weekend class at Noma to start learning these skill sets before you uh, finish up your time in community college, um, really this is just available to adult students who are graduates of high school. Um, these, all of the individual classes are offered currently 100% online. Um, so every one of the individual classes you can browse on our website uh, under present circumstances, under quarantine with the campus closed, you're able to take these classes um, from the comfort of your home. Um, so if you're interested in individual classes, definitely follow up, uh, reach out, fill out that contact card and start talking with Noman about uh, what class would be the best for you. Um, with um, all of those offerings in mind, I wanna talk about admissions at Noman. And that is because Noman is really different than a lot of the art schools that are out there. Um, we just do things very differently because we find that that serves what we're wanting to do that much better. And it helps um, students who are looking to apply to Noman have a lot more help before they actually apply to the programs. Um, one of the ways that that works is our fantastic admissions advisors. Uh, here's all four of them. Uh, and you can see uh, my colleague Xander there, who's in the chat uh, right now speaking with you guys. Um, these guys are available to you at the beginning of even considering going to Noman. Um, a typical college experience is, you know, you kind of figure everything out by yourself. Then you talk to admissions when you're ready to apply, you send in your portfolio, and then you stand back and cross your fingers and hope that they come back to you with good news. Our admissions advisors at Noman are a lot more involved in the process. Um, they're a lot more available to you. They're actually the first person you speak with. And what they will do is they will answer any questions you have, whether that's about um, the portfolio process or whether that's about financial aid, about our academic programs. They will even um, start to uh, take a look at your artwork and offer you uh, advice and coaching and how you can build up your portfolio. What's the best way that you can take the body of work that you have and build that up into something uh, that's going to be um, a strong portfolio submission to our full-time programs. Um, these guys are available for all of that. Um, for students that are interested in being really engaged with admissions, I've known some of these advisors to go back and forth um, for, um, for months at a time, just helping you level up. It's entirely dependent upon what you want and um, how, how motivated you're gonna be in terms of uh, engaging the advice and direction they give you. But that is a free resource we wanna make available to anybody who is even just interested in coming to Noman. So one of the ways you can get in touch with admissions and really the best way is to just simply fill out the digital contact card. Uh, Xander can share a link for that in the chat. It's just gonna answer, ask you a few questions that better helps us to understand where you're coming from and helps us to develop a strong you know, uh, record for you um, that we can refer to uh, as we continue to engage you. But um, you know, we're not gonna call you at dinner time for the rest of your life or anything like that. It's a, it's a very um, you know, low, low pressure kind of a situation where an advisor is gonna reach out to you and uh, just make sure that you have all of your questions answered and have um, all the resources that you need. And uh, if, you're, if you want it, they can coach you in your artwork as well and help you prepare your portfolio before you apply. Um, so definitely, I would encourage you to do that. It's the best thing that you can do if you're interested in Nomen. Lastly, I want to mention our live events, which this is one of them. So welcome to a Nomen live event. Uh, currently, all of our events are streamed live um, on uh, Twitch, uh, YouTube, and Facebook, uh, including today's. And um, all of them that are streamed are being recorded and are available afterwards. Um, and we have well over 100 amazing events that we have uh, already in our playlists online that you can refer to as free inspirational and educational content. This is a uh, fantastic events where you get to hear directly from artists in the industry. You get to hear about um, current techniques that artists are using in the industry today. You get to hear about how some amazing projects are being made. Um, but additionally, we also are doing events like this, informational sessions and interviews with artists. We're creating more content uh, for artists that may be at the beginning of the process and may be considering Nomen, but need to know more um, about this world and what it is like to build a career in digital production. Um, so all of this is available to you. And one of the ways that this is available to you is I just want to mention that we would love to come visit you in your virtual classroom, whether you're an educator or you are a student um, in high school or community college, and you're like, man, I would love for Noman to come visit my, my art class, uh, talk to the class that I'm in. Uh, we, what we offer presently is uh, kind of a 
great kind of dual thing, which is um, we'll send you a link to a virtual presentation like this one that your class can watch. Um, since that's already recorded and it's already ready to go, you can do that at your convenience of the class. And then we would love to follow up with a uh, live visit to your virtual classroom to answer questions, to talk about your art. We also have um, a really cool interactive experience we've been doing uh, that you can see here on the right hand side, which is we've been jumping in a collaborative uh, cloud based digital canvas where we can all draw together and kind of have a bit of an art jam while we talk about um, artists, uh, jobs for artists in the industry, as well as Noman's educational offerings. So something we want to make sure that everybody knows is available. Um, and you can definitely reach out to Noman. Uh, you, if you fill out a contact card, you can mention you're interested in that as well. Um, or you can uh, email us um, at uh, recruitment at noman.edu. Um, but we'd love to hear from you. And in fact, my colleague Xander can even uh, share my email address in the chat today. If you're interested in an opportunity like that, you can just email me directly and I'd be happy uh, to set something up. Uh, so with that, guys, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for being here today, for taking the time, uh, especially to spend some time with Olivier and hear from him. Um, I know that he was very excited to be on the stream today and we had a great time together. And thank you as well for sticking around and learning a bit more about the industry, careers that are available and how Nomen can help you achieve that career. Uh, so please, Feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. Uh, my name is Adam Hartel. I'm a Noman representative. Um, I'm actually, if you invite me to your classroom, I'll be the guy that comes and visits you. Um, if you have any questions at all, definitely fill out that contact card and get in touch with admissions. Uh, you can go to our website and even request a digital view book as well. Um, but with that, guys, I just want to say thank you. Um, this is Adam signing off. Stay safe, stay creative, and we'll see you back here on the stream for some amazing events. Follow us on social media to find, to be the first to know about the next event that's going to be happening here so you can tune back in. So see you guys.